This tutorial video is going to show you how to replace a fan inside of a MacBook A1181. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to watch this video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to actually replace a broken and malfunctioning fan on a MacBook A1181. So this is one of the original MacBooks Mac came out with around 2005-2006. Um, this is the the non-unibody. Uh, first things I want to point out to you when you're working on this, uh, you'll just need a small Phillips screwdriver. I use a PH00, and then I use a just, just a slim iFixit tool to get into some of the parts that we need to. Now, to save some of you guys uh, some time, I've actually gone ahead and removed a majority of the screws, uh, just so you don't have to watch me take out a million screws. But I'm going to walk you through all the screws that you do have to remove in order to make this repair successful. The next thing that I suggest you do is make a sketch on a piece of paper or draw something out so you don't lose these screws. The last thing you want to do is actually go through a repair, go to put it back together, and then have either missing screws or screws that are put into the wrong places. Nobody likes that. Um, there, there are a lot of screws that have to come out of this. We're talking probably about 15 to 20 screws. So the first thing that we would go ahead and do is actually just remove the battery. Uh, you can do that by unlocking the battery, it pops right out, and then you're actually going to have your L-shaped bracket here. Your L-shaped bracket is going to fit in here like so. This is really going to be the first part that we want to take care of. It has three screws. It has one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. So you're going to take your small PH00 screwdriver and you're going to go ahead and remove that bracket. The screws are going to stay in this bracket, so don't try to continue to pull them. They won't come out of it. So we're going to go ahead and remove that bracket now. The next thing that you'll, you'll see if you look from like a landscape view, you'll see that there are three screws down here at the bottom. I'll try to get a better shot for you guys. So right down here there will be a screw, there will be a screw here, and there will be a screw here. We're going to have to remove all three of those screws because they're all connecting the top case to the computer. We're also in this battery bay going to be removing the two screws on the outer portion of your battery connector. Should zoom in here real quick. So we're going to remove those screws as well. In addition to that we are actually going to go into this inside frame and this inside frame, it may be a little bit tricky to see here on the video, but you're going to be removing four screws here. It's every other screw. Best thing to do is to start on this side, skip the first one, remove the second one, skip the third one, remove the fourth one. Start over on this side, skip the first screw, remove the second one, skip the third one, remove the fourth one. And so you have every other screw on this side and every other screw on this side leaving the two middle screws still intact. You don't have to remove those in order to take off the top case. Then we're going to go ahead and remove these three screws here. So we'll remove those three screws. Then you have on this back side four screws. You've got one here, you've got one here, you have one over here, and you have one over here that need to be removed. Once you have those, the only other screws that need to be removed are going to be the ones on this side, this one, and this one. Now you have other screws on this side. It's the same side that has all of your connector ports. Now there are two screws here. You do not have to remove these. If you do, it can actually make it tricky for you later because they hold a metal bracket on the reverse side in. The screws you removed were right here in the battery area. So those were the ones we had to remove to get this top case keyboard off. So now, once we have our, all of our screws, lay them out. Uh, you can use a map. I do this so many times a day that I don't really need to. I'll kind of try to give you guys a view. I lay them out just in the order that I take them out so you guys can see here a little bit. Just makes it easy for me when I'm working on these things to go ahead and keep my screws in order. So that now that we have all the screws removed, the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is actually remove the keyboard itself. So to do that, open it up, and it will be a little bit tight. I always start on this far left corner, and I pull until I hear it pop. 
Now all of these are pressed into little tiny snapping brackets that work their way around. So when you start to get resistance, don't be scared, you are going to hear a little bit of a popping as you're taking this keyboard off. Just make sure you have all the screws we talked about removed or you're going to be yanking and cranking on this thing and you might actually end up doing damage to the board. So now that we pop it up and pop it around, get it to come up. Be very gently once you get it loose because your keyboard is still connected. So I'm going to lean the keyboard up. I'm going to reach in here and I'm just going to unplug it from the logic board. And you want to be very careful and ginger when you do that so you don't end up actually stripping this plug off. If you do that, there's no going back. You just ruined this entire top case and the top case will have to be replaced. So now we have that removed. We're going to go ahead and set that to the side. And as you can see, now we have access to pretty much everything that we need. So I'm going to zoom in here on the fan because that's really going to be the next area that we're working on. So now the fan, just a couple things to take care of before we go and fully remove it. And that's going to be unplug the disk drive. This is the disk drive or the optical drive. Unplug that so we can expose this cable right here. There's a tiny little cable that's connected to the fan. You can see it comes out from the fan, walk it around. This would be the plug that we remove. So we're going to go ahead and remove that plug. Now there's some static discharge tape that's basically connecting the fan and the optical drive. We're going to take that. We're just going to put it back, but we're going to bend it back for now. The next thing we do is remove two screws. They're kind of hard to see from that particular angle, so I'm coming a little closer for you. You've got a screw right down here, and you've got a screw over here. Remove both of those so we can go ahead and get access to removing the fan entirely. I use a little magnet to keep those, those little screws from getting away from me. Okay, now we have those removed, we can very gently lift the fan up and kind of rock it away from the tape and the heat sink and it will come out just like so. So this was my old fan and we'll go ahead and be replacing this with my new one. This would be my new one. I'll zoom out a little bit here for you guys. So this would be the old one. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And we're going to replace it with this new one. Now it's going to be quite easy to actually get this back in. Just kind of come in a little bit of an angle. Make sure you clear the cables over here on your right. And then you'll be able to butt it right into this heat sink. And lay it down all nice like so. We're going to take our two screws that we just removed. Make sure we get everything lined up. And then we're going to pop those screws in. Make sure you plug your fan in. And that's very, very important, guys. If you do not plug your fan in, it's not going to be pushing the heat out of the inside of your logic board bay. If that happens, you can actually burn your logic board up and ruin the computer. Um, that's why, A, the fans are really important. That's why I'm replacing it in this particular machine to keep it from overheating, save the computer's life, and make sure everything is working properly. The next thing that you have to do is just put your keyboard back on. I lay it down, and tilt it at angle so we can get it plugged into the logic board. Once it's all plugged into the logic board, we can begin to lay, lay the keyboard down. Now I use a little Slim Jim tool just to get the rest of my brackets laid down. And now you can actually press around your outer edge to snap it back into place. The one thing that I would certainly tell you guys is be careful around this edge. This is where your disk drive is. 
obviously it's hollow because that's where you insert the disc. If you push too hard going up this side, you can actually bend down the disc drive so you can't insert a disc or disc won't eject properly. And you have to get in there and kind of pry it open. So just be really careful when you're pushing in that area. I don't even use a lot of pressure. My screws are gonna grab it, pull it into place later, snap everything else down. And now I'm basically ready to go with the reassembly. So again, I'm not gonna bug you guys and show you all the million screws to put back in. But a real quick recap, we'll put the four on the back side back in. We're gonna put the two right here. We're gonna put our three screws right here. We're gonna put our four that went along this frame, the two that went on the outside of the battery board, and the three, the three that went along the inside here. And then we're gonna pop our battery L-shaped bracket back in. Once that's done, we can pop the battery back in and we'll be good to go. Thanks for watching the tutorial video. Hopefully this helped you guys out. If you have any questions, let me know. If there's other tutorial videos on other repairs that you guys are interested in, please go ahead and send me a message, like the video, share it. Thanks for watching, guys.